the Holy Spirit. Most say Holy Spirit is a distinct person from the Father and Son. Others say Holy Spirit is the force of God. And some say Holy Spirit is not a distinct person from the Father. So which is it? Well, to answer this, first, let's establish that God is referring to the very essence or nature that makes God what He is, such as power, wisdom, and love. Now, these essences are inseparable from each other and His person. One can say, person and nature are two sides of a coin inseparable from each other, so that where there is the essence such as the power of God, there is also the person of God. If illustrated in a diagram, God is like a big white circle. The whiteness of that circle represents the essence we call God. And this essence is also a person in himself who is inseparable from his nature. So that in my diagram, where there is that whiteness, the person of that whiteness is also there. Now in my belief, the Holy Spirit is not a distinct person from the Father. The person governing the Holy Spirit is none other than the person of the Father. From a biblical perspective, only the Son was given a life of himself as read in John chapter 5, verse 26. But what is my justification for this belief? Well, if the Holy Spirit is a distinct person from the Father, it would be right to say that when the Son calls God the Father, he must be referring to the Holy Spirit because it was the Holy Spirit who caused to conceive Mary as read in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. If, say, Peter and John are two distinct persons, whereby John went to a woman for her to conceive, the child of that woman would be of John, even if it was Peter who sent John to impregnate the woman. Still, since they are distinct persons, the child would be of John, not of Peter. Now, when is it possible that even if it was John who impregnate the woman, the father of the child is still Peter? Well, this is only possible if John is like a clone of Peter, so that John as a person is an extension of Peter, meaning Peter and John were not distinct persons. Here, when the child was born, his father is actually Peter, because John's person is also Peter's person. Besides, the title father and son are emergent titles due to begetting. The one God who is in the state of spirit and is holy, before begetting the person of his Logos, was not yet a father, and his Logos was not yet a son. Here, the one God was Holy Spirit, only when he beget the person of the Logos, that the Holy Spirit becomes the Father. This is the reason that when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, there is no forgiveness, as read in Matthew chapter 12, verse 31, because you are transgressing the Father himself. Some may ask, but the Holy Spirit can be sent by the Son. Does this mean that the Son can command the Father, since Father and Holy Spirit are one person? No. Remember that the authority of the Son is of the Father. As the Bible says, All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. John chapter 17, verse 10. All I have is yours. One of these is authority. Thus it follows that the Son's authority is of the Father, so that when the Son commands the Holy Spirit, it was a command of the Father, meaning it was the Father Himself sending His very Spirit through the Son. Yes, the Father's very Spirit is the Holy Spirit, but that Spirit is not just a force or power, rather also conscious, thus a person not distinct to the person of the Father. And because the Spirit of God is conscious, it would follow that the Spirit is capable of teaching, thus was sent for this reason as mentioned in the following verse. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, and will remind you of everything I have said to you. John chapter 14, verse 26. Comment, like, share, follow, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click on the bell icon to get notification. Thank you for watching.